our agenda today, um, we will start with um, explaining you what the Global Bean Project is all about and what we plan in the coming months. Um, we have then prepared a small um, participation uh, with you to, to get to know better the audience today. We will then present the very first publication of the Global Bean Project, which is a work in progress, the manifesto of legumes, and explain to you why legumes um, are such uh, in focus for us. Then we will mention other parts of the project, for example, the show gardens, um, also the contest we would like to do with you uh, until our next monthly meeting on the 10th of February. And um, other models of the project will be presented, such as the cultivation instructions uh, that we are planning to publish and the online seed festival that we plan on the 2nd of March. And we will also present you or give you a preview of the next presentation on the 10th of February, which is about exploring bean diversity. And finally, a last part will be dedicated to um, the bean diversity in Kenya, which is also a part uh, of the, the, the project through the, our future online repository and our future platform. Thank you. Benny, your turn. Thank you very much. Um, what you see here is a, is a little overview on what uh, the components of this Global Bean Project uh, will be. Over the next nearly two years, we started in uh, October and we will finish uh, or continue in October 2023. And um, the basic idea of the Global Bean Project is actually the idea of proper making propaganda for all kinds of leguminous plants. The bean is just uh, the, the, the icon for all the legumes uh, that uh, we want to promote. And why we want to promote them, we will hear uh, in a second from Donald, who is uh, one of the leaders of um, a leguminous um, plant networking amongst professionals and scientists. A lot has been developed over the past 10 to 5 years uh, in Europe in order to make leguminous plants more popular amongst farmers again. Uh, but this is not our job. We don't want to explain to farmers how to do their job. We want to explain to a broader public why it is so important to have more legumes uh, in the fields. What are the advantages of having more legumes on the table? And also how legumes can really make a difference in terms of biodiversity, in terms of climate change, in terms of the big crisis uh, we are uh, facing uh, today. And that's the idea. We would like to create a network of bean lovers, a bean club, so to speak, right? Uh, of people who do it in their restaurant, who do it in their garden, who do it uh, in their school, who want to uh, make beans, who want to make leguminous plants more popular. And um, we would hope that uh, we can really build a little community amongst you and uh, a growing uh, public who uh, has all kinds of approaches to more beans. The key of the, of the project will be our monthly meeting. This is the first and we will have 22 more of these uh, meetings where we will have a lecture, where we will have um, also uh, interactive exchanges and where we will present uh, ways and means how to make beans more popular. And uh, these meetings uh, will be preceded by an internal meeting of the partners. At this moment, we are 40 partners, mainly around Europe, but also beyond in India, in Kenya, and hopefully uh, we will expand uh, on this and this internal partner meeting is preceding the public meetings every month um, 
where we look at uh, joint projects at working groups and so on and so forth. We will have two seed fairs, online seed fairs. One, uh, the first will be in March and uh, Barbara will present to us uh, how that will be looking. We are planning at least two uh, online cooking events uh, where we hope to have uh, uh, chefs uh, who will exchange their way of, of preparing beans from the great diversity of bean cultures around Europe, but also in Africa, in Asia, in India especially. And, and this will be also presented uh, briefly by Ecke Spiegel, the chief gardener of the 2000 square meter project. Um, we will have show gardens. We will try to connect uh, gardens dedicated to, to leguminous plants, of course, right, over the season. And we hope that with our um, little mobile phones and um, all the charm of the uh, different gardeners, we can convey the diversity as it is growing in the gardens. What we will also prepare are cultivation instructions. We will have a first one uh, presented um, today and information sheets. And we cannot afford to translate this meeting here online. This is too expensive, but we will try to translate not only the written instructions, but also subtitle the public events that we have so they can be shared in different languages and it is yeah not only a translation into a different language but sometimes it's also an adaptation to a different cooking and 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 farming culture and so on and so forth we will create a public information hub on a website with uh, the informations we gather here and we also will uh, provide an internal exchange platform there for our community building for the exchange of the working groups. We will uh, have a YouTube video channel where we will share these public events, but also the show gardens uh, videos and other material uh, that can be also subtitled and used. And um, we will also prepare all kind of uh, ready-made or, or half ready-made uh, social media material. And um, the whole idea about this is that we can share uh, media content, we can share videos, we can share all kind of um, ways and means to make the beans more popular. Uh, I should uh, uh, make reference, of course, to our Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature, Conservation, Nuclear Safety and Consumer Protection. They are funding this project for the next two years. And uh, they do it in a program that is called Eureni, which aims to uh, benefit the uh, exchange of um, NGOs mainly on key topics such as biodiversity in Europe. So it is a project. We have, uh, you will see in the next slide, um, we have some plans uh, yet, but not uh, a full plan. You can see our next meeting is on the 10th of February, because this is the World Pulse Day. And uh, there will be a presentation on bean diversity. We will have a, uh, the seed festival on the 2nd of March. There will be a meeting on legume mixtures uh, on the 24th of March, and we have planned to do a lecture on intercropping, on how to co-plant uh, different uh, plants, not only various varieties, and how to use uh, legumes in this respect on the 21st of April. From there on, we have fixed the dates, but not the topics uh, yet. And we are looking for your feedback. Um, we will, uh, we hope you will 
share your views and your ideas uh, with us. We have prepared a little feedback uh, sheet as well at the end of this uh, session. And we will try to develop um, as this project grows, as this community grows. And I very much look forward to be your host uh, over the next uh, years um, on the Global Bean. Thank you very much. And um, having said this, I would like to um, in, uh, hand over to Romain and uh, Lisa, who have prepared a little uh, online game where you can show where you are and who you are. And over to you. Thank you. Exactly. You can also find here in uh, in our land pay, landing page, uh, we will share with you the link in the chat, the list of all the partners of the project, in case you want to have a look. Oh my, I hand it over to you. Okay, so yeah, very welcome, very warm welcome from my side as well. Um, we thought it would be nice to know uh, who uh, are the participants who joined us today. And we prepared three questions that you will uh, be able to answer in a maybe a bit unconventional way, but some of you might already have um, learned to use this tool. It is the um, annotation tool, which you can find um, normally on the uh, top right of your screen. So if you look on the um, the upper part of your screen, you should see this, um, this green um, bar who says that you're seeing my presentation. And next to it, you should see view options. Um, of course, it will be in your own language, it will be something different. Um, if you click on there, you should see a drop down menu and you have the option to annotate the presentation. So please don't start yet, but um, as when I will show you the questions, this will be um, your way of uh, annotating and you can um, then choose between different things, but please all use the stamp function. So which you, everyone can of course already try to get in that menu just to make sure you see that function. If you have any problem with it, please also write in the chat, especially to Franzi, who might help you to find your way. So, um, yes, this will be the STEM function we will use. Um, Oma? Yes? I'm afraid that this function is not yet freigegeben. It's not okay. there. It's not there. Okay. Um, thanks for telling me this. It should be available now. Now it's working. Now. Okay. In German, Sorry. it says kommentieren, Ansicht Optionen und dann kommentieren in the German version. Okay. There's people requesting remote control of my screen. That is not, not the right um, function okay. yet, but um, I hope everyone has found the annotation functionality by now. So um, I will now move to the next slide. So please don't <laughs> annotate yet. Um, okay, so right now I will clear once again, please um, show your location on this map. So if you, and you can use the, the star, the star is the best way of annotating it. So the stamp. Please use the Europe map if you are in Europe, because this enables us to see it better. And if you by mistake um, press on a, a wrong, um, wrong place, you can use the undo function, which should also be um, visible. Rückgängig machen. Yeah, to, to um, erase, for, uh, for example, if you used <laughs> Uh, an arrow instead of um, any of the stamp. Okay, so I think people, we start having a good overview of um, of this very diverse um, 
audience today. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. mm, I guess I will still more people come. We are 100 participants, so um, yes. Okay, we almost have um, people from every continent. If, um, Oceania is also um, considered as a continent. We just would need one more person from, from that part of the world. But um, that's uh, very nice to see that um, people from all over the world joining us today. So thanks a lot. And um, we really encourage you to continue joining our meetings and uh, contribute to it. So I will uh, now end this. As Franzi, have you made a screenshot of this? If not, yes. you. thank you. I will now clear the drawings. Please, um, please stop um, for a second. Um, and I will get now to the next question which is already entering more in, um, into the topic of our project. So you have to pick your favorite legume. If you please only try to pick really the number one, only one, one legume. If your, is, your legume is not present here, you can go on the, the bottom of the screen here, just on this X, because of course we, we couldn't um, show the, the, this extremely broad um, plant family, but we have picked the most, um, the most important ones. Okay. I was expecting it to be, I was not expecting it to be that um, equilibrated between uh, different kind of legumes, although Yes, maybe. I guess not all the people here know what uh, cowpeas are, since they are not cultivated in Europe, as far as I know, except for on the global field, um, where we also want to show this this legume that is, it's um, Portugal is is cultivating cowpea and still okay. part of Europe. Okay, sorry for me um, having mistaken that. Thank you. So I will let you a few more seconds and then Francie will make a screenshot. Thank you. Okay, Francie, I'm going to deleting it right now. And now we come to our last question, which is, um, what do you do with legumes? So depending on, maybe you have a garden, you grow legumes, um, maybe you're more um, the kind of person who really loves to eat them. So maybe we have some people from research institutes, um, some people who, some bloggers or uh, influencers who like to show, um, yeah, to, to talk and write about legumes. And again, I'm really amazed about the uh, diversity present in this audience. So um, I can already tell you that there will be something for all of you that we will be presenting you the, um, the next events we'll have. But um, it's very nice to see that our content will probably resonate with you. Okay, so I will now, um, Franzi, if you have made a, a screenshot, I will clear the results. And then I will also ask you not to comment anymore, but I will also um, disable this function. So since we don't need it for, for the rest of our presentation. Okay, so. Now I say about, and I give uh, the word to Benny, I think, who wants yes. to briefly introduce Donald before he starts talking about the, the manifesto.
Benny, you're, Benny, uh, you're still muted. Donald is amongst the smallest group of us who are doing research on the leguminous plants uh, as well. And um, he has, I think, been in most of the uh, EU networks of scientists and practitioners uh, who have uh, formed uh, over the past years. And we are very proud to have him with us here as well. And he has uh, taken a lead in our working group uh, who is doing a kind of a legume manifesto, um, which is work in progress. You can uh, comment on it. You can feedback uh, to Donald. And um, the purpose of this legume manifesto is clearly to say why we should love beans. Over to you, Donald. Uh, thank you very much, Benedict. I, I, um, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. I, I'm reminded uh, my one of my earliest memories is that uh, I watched my grandfather plant beans when I was about four years old, uh, and it was for him a symbolic act almost. Uh, it, it left a mark on me, and here I am, uh, fifty, sixty, almost sixty years later, uh, talking to you. So it 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 is a cause for uh, causes me to reflect. I I think about Wendell Berry. Uh, the American poet and farmer who said that how we eat determines to a great extent how we use the world. And this actually is not only an eloquent way of putting a, a, a presentation, it's also a scientific fact actually, that how we eat determines to a great extent how we use the world. And this puts, puts consumers in a, a very important position with respect to sustainable development and reducing in particular greenhouse gas emissions, because the choices that they make with such a, in, in such a situation where they're shopping uh, has a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions and many other uh, problems that we face today. The fact of the matter is, is that in Europe, um, the uh, food that we eat uh, comprises one third, one third of the, the calories in the food that we buy uh, is from a livestock and uh, protein sources, whereas these, uh, these protein sources cause more than two ter thirds of the impact. So the very first thing that any consumer can do to move towards a sustainable uh, development and help uh, sustainable development is to change the way they eat. And this means moving to more plant-based diets. And not only does that help uh, the planet, it is also extremely healthy for them. And this moves us on to the role of legumes. If we go to the next slide. Uh, what is then, what is so special about legumes? Well, if you ask a number of people, scientists and farmers, you ask them, well, what is a legume? You'll get many different answers. They, they will probably refer to um, the fact that legumes produce pods, the seeds are in pods, and they'll also talk about the fact that uh, legumes fix nitrogen. But the definition of a legume actually is to do with the shape of the flower. Uh, it's a, a plant, a very large um, family of plants that have, the, where the flowers have five petals and the, 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 the flower has the shape of a butterfly. And uh, the Germans call this the Schmetterlingsblüte. And uh, that actually is the definition of, of legumes. So why should we be excited about a group of plants, a very large family of plants that are defined by the shape of the flower? And the answer to that is, can be found when you uh, look uh, below the ground uh, and you will find that the roots are deep, generally speaking deep, and they are covered in a whole lot of nodules, uh, lumps uh, like this, which where the, the legume plant has formed a, a partnership with bacteria and this partnership results in the, in the nitrogen from the air being fixed by the plant uh, so that the plant doesn't need any fertilizer or, or external source of nitrogen. And this is done by a substance called leguglobin. You can see it here. It's very closely related to uh, the hemoglobin in our blood. And actually because of that close relationship, it is also has a reddish color. So a healthy nodule will be red. And uh, this means that these legumes are unique 
in agriculture and almost unique in nature in how they take the nitrogen out of the air and fix it into a reactive form that can be used to build protein. The result of that is, is that legume plants are characterized by being rich in protein. And uh, if we move on, the, uh, consequently, the seeds of the legume plants, especially the beans and the peas, uh, are very potentially very valuable in our diet. So why, why would we have a manifesto? What should a manifesto do? Well, a manifesto is about change. And the first thing that we can do is uh, the first group of people who are um, addressed in this program of change are consumers. Uh, we can simply uh, enjoy more the characteristics of these plants, especially the pulses, so as to reduce uh, uh, the, um, the effect of our eating patterns on the planet, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and also, and this is very important, also in most societies, such a change will be a change to a healthier diet. The next group of people, of course, are the farmers. The next slide. And the farmers, um, uh, the fact that it is a reality in Europe that we have tried for many um, uh, years now, Benedict uh, referred to some of the efforts, to try to encourage more production of legumes in Europe. And um, uh, it is a fact that uh, le legumes, because they fix nitrogen, because they have these characteristics, are actually um, uh, not able uh, to, in many situations, not able to provide the farmer with the profitability that he he or she gets from the cereal crops that are very commonly grown in Europe. European agriculture is unique. And I'm sorry for being uh, uh, European centric, but it is an illustration. We, we in Europe provide all the food, temperate foodstuffs for 450 million people um, supported by 10 million tons of nitrogen and 15 million tons of import of protein. This system is unsustainable. And so we do need as citizens to accept that we have to help farmers uh, diversify their cropping in Europe and perhaps in other parts of the world so that we can harness the, the great benefits for our environment and for our health that uh, legumes can pr provide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. Also, thank you for staying so tightly in time. Oh, good. <laughs> and um, you, um, we've shared a link to this work in progress where you can have your say on the, on the manifesto. And uh, soon we will also publish a first version on the uh, Global Bean website, the landing page we have until we have a, the, 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 the real thing. Um, and both of these links you will find in the chat. And I hand over now to Ecke Spiegel to uh, briefly talk about our show garden concept and how far we've gotten with it already. Ecke, over to you. Yes, uh, thank you. My name is Eckhard Spiegel. Um, I must admit, I can't start with a poet. Uh, I'm not such a poetic person, but what I can share, uh, Donald, is also a childhood uh, memory because the first skilled work which my father allowed me to do in the garden was to drive a bean seed drill. I could hardly reach the handle, um, you know, one of those manual ones. Um, anyways, it also stuck with me because now I'm also a gardener. So back to our project. Um, what we intend to do in, uh, we call that module four, which is certainly not very, uh, a not a very poetic name, in our show gardens, um, we would like to exchange um, across Europe and beyond uh, uh, how we cultivate beans. We would like to exchange our experience and maybe learn from each other and most of all also uh, promote uh, the, uh, to the general public uh, that it is worth uh, growing legumes, not only for nutrition, not only for soil fertility, 
but it will be one of my projects in Berlin also to encourage people to grow uh, legumes because they are beautiful. Um, it is not only a botanical question, the way the flower looks, but uh, they have one of the most, in my point of view, uh, certainly among the most beautiful flowers in the, um, amongst plants. Um, we would uh, also like to strengthen exchange around uh, nutrition, uh, go beyond uh, uh, professional growers and, and reach the general public. Next slide, please. Um, uh, our first meeting, we held this in, uh, in uh, December already, and we had uh, some participants from uh, across Europe already, uh, but uh, it is here also the occasion to ask uh, as many as possible growers of bean, please join us and help us to strengthen our network, to exchange seeds, and also to share experiences and uh, also to reach out to the public. If you are interested in that, if you are a grower of legumes, uh, and if you are ready to share your experiences with the public, uh, please contact us. We, are, we, are, we would be very grateful uh, to find more show gardens across Europe and beyond. Um, so, uh, just a brief overview at the end, what I intend to do at the Global Field in Berlin, where you are all invited to come and visit us. Uh, we have about 350 square meter of different legumes uh, from um, chickpeas to groundnuts to uh, cayenne, cayenne, pigeon pea, uh, which is my favorite, by the way, uh, and also a wide variety of beans um, uh, in, in uh, the classical sense, and uh, of course, also soybean. You can all see all those plants, also the tropical ones growing here in Berlin, which is not uh, easily found, I think, uh, in other places uh, here in Berlin. And um, our intention next year is, uh, is to, to, uh, to show even more variety within those groups. So that is, we will show different varieties of soybeans instead of only one. Uh, I will make sure that you see at least uh, 15 species of plants which are uh, called uh, beans somewhere in the world. And... Um, yeah, so this is a little bit uh, our plans for next year. Uh, if you have also plans, if you are a grower of legumes, please contact us and I'm sure you will be a valuable part of our network in, uh, that we are just about to build. So thank you all and uh, hope to see you soon. Um. We have thought about a way to exchange um, pictures of beans because beans, the flowers, as well as um, some uh, dishes prepared with, uh, with beans and, uh, and the plant itself are uh, very beautiful, we believe. And we would like to launch a bean beauty contest. Um, there is a huge diversity as well, which can be represent, represented, we think, with uh, pictures. And we would like to ask you to send us your pictures of the most beautiful beans that you have, that you know, or also the most exceptional ones. And you can do that uh, through our email address, bean at 2000m2.eu, or you can share them uh, with us through Instagram, adding the new hashtag global bean that we're trying to, to bring back to life because it hasn't been used so much lately. And you can tag us on Instagram. If you have any difficulties uh, with it or any suggestion on how to, to use Instagram on the best way, feel free to contact us, to send us a, a message on Instagram or per email. And our plan is to show these beautiful pictures that we will receive from you in our next monthly meeting, which is on the 10th of February, already in two weeks. So you have two weeks 
And uh, yeah, we very much look, uh, I'm very much looking forward to see what we will receive. If you have also any question about specific uh, type of beans, it's maybe the occasion to, to send it to us with your picture. Um, because we will spread the world among our uh, partners network and uh, can uh, discuss uh, further about it in, in the monthly meeting. On the 10th of February, you will see all the pictures and be able to vote about it and select the one picture that you find the most interesting or beautiful. And uh, we will uh, send over to the big winner um, diversity seed package. Um, and uh, yes, we are very much looking to hear more about uh, to, to receive pictures from you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cecilia Antoni and I'm very happy to see that there are so many uh, fava bean lovers among us. Uh, fava bean is actually also my favorite beans and um, though I was very happy to write the cultivation instruction for the fava bean and you actually this is the first um, cultivation instruction of a series so we will uh, publish many more and um, the, we started with the fava be bean because the fava bean will be the first one you can grow in your garden in the garden mm -hmm. seasons for this year. You can start already um, in, now in February, but it's also quite a forgotten um, bean. Um, um, besides uh, is a history. Uh, for many, many centuries, the fava bean was the only bean in Europe and it was a stable food. And uh, if you look in the old cookbooks, you can see a lot of recipes with fava beans, with only fava beans. And nowadays it's, you can um, hardly buy fava beans in the shops. So it's a good way to start uh, to grow um, fava beans in your garden. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm specialized on the fava bean in cooking. And so you, um, I have also a website where you can find recipes with fava beans. For example, um, the brownies you can make with fava beans or also falafel. And there are actually, some people are confused of fava beans because there is a, um, a small sized um, seed and a, a bigger size seed. You can see it on the picture here. They are all the same family. And the small size is the older one and the uh, bigger size, it came only after the middle age. It was developed from the small size. And uh, it's a very easy to grow um, bean. Um, and um, yeah, it's, um, and it's very, um, has a lot of nutrition, of course. And um, you can make a lo lot of different dishes out of it. That's it from my side. Oh, I forgot something. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, you can. Uh, we will publish soon um, the uh, cultivation instruction, and you will find it on our uh, landing page. I see if the link is already in the chat. Thank you very much. There we go to Barbara. Everybody, yes, I want to just uh, invite you for our seed exchange festival on the second of March. Um, we already talked about it several times today. Um, I think maybe you uh, just can have a look that we have a film um, there where we, uh, where we show how to propagate beans. Then there will be short lectures of people from different countries, how they exchange uh, seeds. And Patrick will be uh, so friendly and show us his uh, cultivation um, and propagation instructions, which he uh, wrote into a sheet. And um, one of my favorite projects in the <laughs> exchange is uh, the competition. All of you are invited to send us uh, a documentation about your favorite bean, 
how fast it grows. Maybe you can uh, show it with photographs and how high it grew. And out of that, we will uh, make a small exhibition next year in our street festival. And Lisa will show it on Instagram, on our Instagram account. Yes, and there will be meet and greets where you can ask your questions to um, experienced seed sa savers and cultivators. So the next season will be only successful. And for all who are already experienced, we are planning at the same time a cooking session so they can uh, look what uh, they can uh, make out of their um, harvest. Yes, and the last um, part of the program will be the exchange rooms for all the seed lovers so they can uh, exchange their seeds. You have to fill in, um, in advance into a Google sheet. So you will find your way for exchanging uh, very easily. Yes, and throughout the time we, have, we will have breakout rooms where you can see the lectures of this uh, and of the next um, global bean event and an exhibition about beans. Yeah, so feel free and register or have a look at the Facebook event. And yeah, we would be happy to have you with us on the 2nd of March. That's it. Thank you. And uh, over to the Bean Diversity by Patrick, which will be our show on the 10th of February for the Global Pulse Day. Maybe Franzi will also share the link for um, for the seed festival so that you can register straight away if you want. It will be in chat. Sorry, Patrick, over to you. No problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I also just shortly want to invite everybody uh, to our next uh, public session then on the 10th of February, World Pulses Day, about exploring bean diversity. Here you can just see a few pictures. We already heard that uh, even the seeds are really beautiful. They are, they are uh, part of uh, a great uh, beauty, which uh, I want to show there and, and get people more motivated in, in growing beans, in eating beans, and using beans. And maybe we can see already the next slide. Um, I give a few points uh, uh, in, the, in the next uh, public talk. In the beginning, an overview about the legume family. Then I want to point out the short history of beans. I mean, that talk is especially uh, dedicated to the Phaseolus group. So we talk about uh, uh, the, the pole beans and the bush beans, Phaseolus vulgaris, nanus, coquineus. Um, I give uh, lots of interesting uh, numbers about beans how many are grown and where they are grown, um, how many are used, and um, reasons to be enthusiastic about beans. And in the end, I, I want to um, show ways how to sow, grow, and harvest the beans and uh, give some more impressions about the uh, bean diversity and the, bean, uh, the beauty of the beans. So next slide, please. Yeah, just I want to invite everybody to keep free the 10th of February, 5 p.m for the next uh, public lecture exploring bean diversity on World Pulses Day. And I hope we can use this uh, World Pulses Day uh, to spread um, the motivation for our legumes and uh, may this be a part of it. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there. Thank you so much. And here comes our uh, last presentation for, for today from our partners in Kenya, from Lydia, from the Seed savers in Gilgil, uh, Kenya. Please, Lydia. Thank you. Thank you for this platform. Um, I'm going to present the legumes in Kenya. And we have over 50 varieties of beans that have been uh, grown in Kenya. But currently, we have registered like 33. Uh, the following are the beans we have, the common beans. We have uh, various varieties of beans, as you can see in this slide. Uh, next slide. We have also the peas, we have the chickpeas, we have the pigeon peas, cow peas, and these are some of the photos I corrected uh, from what our farmers said. 
Next, we also have groundnuts uh, grown in uh, western part of Kenya, and we use them raw, uh, smash them to make paste. Yeah. Next one. Yeah, these are some of the regimes that we use as fodder crops. We have Desmodium, we have Sesbania, we have Arfafa plants. Next, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lydia. That's great. So this was um, uh, probably a, a pretty fast presentation uh, we uh, had today. We felt that we would like to introduce you to the diversity of approaches we want to take in this um, in this whole global bean project. One of them, uh, Lydia just mentioned it briefly, is to also learn from countries that have a much richer uh, tradition of, uh, of bean and le legume cultivation than many of our European uh, member states have. And this is especially Kenya and India. We also have uh, Indian partners there. And uh, we believe that we can learn a lot from the South when we talk about uh, legumes uh, here in Europe. Um, I would like to invite you to um, give us a little feedback. You find a, a link in the in the chat to a Mentimeter uh, uh, questionnaire where we would like to hear from you how you feel about the project, how you like this session, what you want us to improve in the future. And definitely the next public sessions will be um, a little more focused on individual aspects of the beans. And they will also be more interactive than this um, session could be. Um, we hope to have uh, discussions there. And we thank you all for joining us uh, in this first uh, session.